Hi guys, welcome to the fly bar. We uh, rarely do fly tying videos and uh, there's a good reason. It's just that they're so uh, boring to make for me and definitely the people that are type A are the ones that watch these videos the most and they really are critical and I could care less. So anyway, I just have, I was on a forum the other day and a guy was uh, lamenting the fact that he uh, could see carp tails but he couldn't see down to where they were because the water was so muddy. And it made me think of this particular fly and I told him I was going to do a video of it just for him. But uh, you're welcome to uh, take a look at this video and copy this fly all you want. I, I really, really do not like this fly because it makes carp look stupid. It's so simple and so unlike anything you see in the water. It doesn't match anything. So I don't know what the name of it is. Bart Larmouth, I believe, is the one that showed me the fly originally. And you don't have to uh, see how it's tied to, to see the fly and you'll know how to tie it. But for those of you just starting out in fly tying, I figure this is a good chance to tie a simple fly that catches carp. And I will uh, watch the subtitles go across and they'll tell you what hook and what thread. and and uh, the details of the ingredients of this actual fly. Like I said, if you know the name of it, please feel free to comment. If you want to give it a name and it doesn't have one or you haven't seen it, feel free to do that too. Um, and please, whatever you do, try this fly in your water, in your part of the country, in the United States or wherever you are in the world, and let me know if it works. Heck, it's worked everywhere I've ever used it. And it works in clear water just as well as muddy water, but it's especially good for those off-color days. So, anyway, on to the video. Thanks for watching, and as always, you can find more information at www.texasflycaster.com. If you have any questions, compliments, criticisms, I'll take it all. Fly at texasflycaster.com is the email address. Thanks for watching. So as I was saying, this is a real easy to change out vise with changing from the uh, regular size jaws, which are for big flies really, to these midge jaws. And uh, changing these over makes it, you know, really easy to get around on these small hooks. And uh, it holds the small, uh, very small hooks much better than the larger one. Of course. You know, it's an investment. There's the parts that go into this. Just four random parts. I'll put that on subtitle. And then there's a limited number of tools that actually go into it too. Really, only three tools. Scissors, bead holder, and a not, not finisher. You know, a whip finisher. About a 140 or a 3.0 thread non-waxed will do the job just fine. And so as we get started, what we want to do is use those bead that bead holder to actually make it easier to thread the uh, the bead onto a TFS, that's the fly shop, TFS 2457 and you can use size 12 or size uh, 14 very small fly hook for um, and it's a little bit offset very small for um, carp but uh, this hook does not straighten out. It's about 2x or 3x strong for its size, so it really does hold up well. Excuse me while I got to have some water this morning. Anyway, you start with your base of thread, and of course, by doing that, you go up to the front, and that secures the bead. Make sure you go ahead and secure the bead first. Run your thread base, I'd say three or four times, just to give it a little more weight in that base or that hook because what's going to happen if this if this fly lays right on the bottom the hook it's going to lay hook up all the weights on the front and on the, on the shank of the hook right there so you go down about fairly far down the hook on the tail end because you want to be able to uh, have this little, little red uh, chenille tail go in there and uh, stick up from from the down position so what I do is I start with a long piece and you just cut it to as needed and that way you waste none of it. And find a random spot on your, you know, not a random spot, but at least a spot on your vise and just cut them off at that same length every time. If you look close at mine, there's a little, little machining area right there and I cut it right on that machine part so I know exactly that it's the same length every time within 
you know, 32nd of an inch. And here's what happens when you start with too short a piece of that's pure gold um, chenille. And we're going to palmer that on, except, you know, the great thing about a rotating vise is you can do that by rotating the vise. So the thread's secured in a thread holder, and we just rotate the vise. And you'll see quickly what an investment in a good vise that rotates, how quickly it pays off or something like this. Even though I'm a little uncoordinated in this video, because I haven't tied this small fly in a long, long time, um, it's not the fault of the vise, that's for sure. So we're going to take that thread, tighten it up again, and then while we're there, we're going to go forward and backwards on that, and that locks that gold in there, and it's not going anywhere. Just cut off the excess real quickly here, right close. And then we're going to finish it off. This is the perfect definition of a cart fly. Fast, easy, and effective. And those are the things that matter the most, really, I think, when it comes to tying just about any fly, but especially cart flies. You want, to, you want something that's simple, real inexpensive, and it works. And I, t I actually uh, did this video for a guy that uh, he was asking about muddy water carp, and he could see the mud clouds, but he couldn't get to them. Well, this is this is this will turn them because of that that bright gold color. Well, there you have it, guys. I use a Dyna King Barracuda Vice, as you can see, and uh, as you saw in the video, probably I uh, showed you how to change out the uh, jaws on this. You really need mid-sized jaws, the smaller ones for the Barracuda, because it's a big vice to begin with. And it comes with a big jaw on it. You got to get the small ones. Sorry. You have to invest in that if you really want this uh, to tie these small flies. Even though they claim that they can tie down to a very small hook size with the big jaws, these small ones are allow you to get your fingers around and get the thread around the small hooks better. So that's one of your investments you might have to make if you're actually into the Barracuda. It's a, uh, it's a really great vise. I've had it for many years now and not had any problems with it. The one thing you want to do when you actually get these new jaws in the mail, they're covered, usually covered with a kind of like a manufacturer's grease, I guess, to keep it from, I don't know, from rusting or something. I don't know why it would do that. But anyway, clean those jaws out in there with a paper towel or something so that there's no grease inside the jaw grip. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later.